What is the best structure when you buy your HMO projects? Hi, I'm Kimberly Shapcock, qualified chartered accountant, property investor and entrepreneur. Let's sit down and have a chat. What is the best structure for your HMO business, your HMO project? Well, this is always one to debate and it depends what you're doing at the time, what the right route is going to be. And as I will always say, it's always a question you should ask at the beginning of each project to make sure that the purchase is completed in the right approach because each time it may be slightly different depending on your circumstances. Now, some of the questions I would always make sure you ask yourself is, what are the risks associated with the HMO? Because this may be one of the reasons why you approach a limited company approach compared to a personal one, or you may go the list risk is very low, so you can do it in your own name, and there may be other questions you need to ask to see whether your own name is more appropriate than in a company. So, Aside from the risk side of things, what are the tax reasons why you may be considering the different approaches? Now, from a tax point of view, we need to look at what your income is. So if you're thinking of buying a HMO in your own name, the question would be how much income is that going to give you personally? And is that going to be taking you to the higher rates of tax or into the additional rates of tax? So at present, we have 50,270 as of 2024 as a basic rate tax limit. So if you're on a salary of say 30,000 and you're going to get 15, 20,000 from your HMO income, then you're potentially going to be okay to do it in your own name. Not necessarily the approach that some people would want to take, but there's no reason you cannot be putting it into your own name. Obviously, some things that we need to consider when you're doing property rentals in your own name is some of the risk side of things. If there is any risks associated with it, just making sure that you've got the appropriate insurances in place to ensure that you're covered if something happens to someone. Obviously, with doing it in your own name, you're going to potentially be having the income that is taxed and section 24 is going to apply to you. Check out the video on section 24 and how the tax calculation works for doing it in your own name and that will just take you through what the implications are on you personally so you can understand that side of things. Now, doing it in your own name may work perfectly, especially if you're looking at selling it in the future. And the reason I say that is because you personally have a capital gains tax allowance of £3,000. So when you sell it in the future, it will help mitigate the capital gains tax that you will have to pay which will be at 18 or 24%. So not potentially that dissimilar to a property if you owned it in a company. So if the end goal is potentially to be selling it in five, 10 years, then actually doing it in your own name may be the right decision for you. The other side of things that I like to just throw in there for tax thinking from a personal name is also your inheritance tax position. Now, depending what you have, inheritance tax is likely to come into play as you develop and grow your portfolio. So it's just something that even at the beginning of your journey or even towards the end of your adventure in property, you still need to just be considering the inheritance tax implications. At present, we have 325,000 as an individual before you fall into the inheritance tax regime, which therefore means if you're buying a HMO that's maybe a four bed, five bed, six bed, then you may already be going over that 325,000, depending whether you've got your own home, savings and other things, this property may take you over as I've seen HMOs valued at from anywhere between 150 to several hundred thousand, four, five, six hundred thousand, depending on the income that they are generating. So inheritance tax is something that you just need to consider because it may impact. However, as we've said, if you're selling the property, then potentially we've not got the same sort of issue because it won't fall into your estate. You'll sell the property, have some money, 
enjoy some life hopefully with that money or gift it to those that you love and care about and then you won't have that money so you've just got rid of the inheritance tax issue. If however you're looking at holding on to it and passing it to the next generation then it's maybe something you need to be thinking about considering so that you're not going to find that half of your wealth from what you have generated in your lifetime is suddenly dissipated and paid over the tax man at 40%. Now that hopefully gives you a bit of a briefing on how it works in your own name. So the alternative that you could decide to go down is through a limited company. Now through a limited company, you'll buy through the limited company and you will own that with whoever, however you want to own it. So if you're buying it and you've got a spouse, you've got children, you've got siblings you're doing it with or grandchildren, you can obviously expand who owns the company, which means the company has lots of shareholders or as many as is appropriate, which spreads the wealth, which has a good plan of mitigating some of that inheritance tax risk if you're looking at passing things on to the next generation. So this is a good bit of inheritance tax planning. Now, one thing I will say with having several different shareholders, you do just need to take caution. We don't tend to like miners as shareholders. And the reason for that is if you are going for lending, lenders do not like under 18s. So there may be a conversation with your broker to make sure how you're structuring that business in a company is going to fit with what the lenders will be happy with. That's because you may have too many shareholders, they might not like under 18s, or they may just want information about everybody. So if they want information about five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 people, that might be a lot of work to get lending compared to having two, three or four of you where they only want it for two of you. So that's just more of a practical point when you're considering how you're setting up your company to ensure that you're not creating your own problems. So have a word with your accountant, have a word with your broker to find what is going to be the right approach. This also brings into play if you end up having a group of companies where you may have different strategies and you find one strategy if you're doing HMOs, one strategy if you're doing flips or developments or you've got SA or something else that you're in a separate company. Again, you just need to make sure the structure for your HMO business fits with what you need for lending to enable you to achieve what you want to be achieving. And this is very key in trying to make sure it fits so you can move forward, whether it just be one or two, or maybe it's 10, 20, 100. Who knows? That is obviously your goal. So from a tax point of view in a company, you're going to be paying tax at either 19 or 25% or the marginal rate in the middle. So that kicks in up to 50,000, it will be at 19%. Anything over 250,000 will be at 25% and anything in the middle will be at that marginal rate between the two rates. So as you can see, if you are a 40% taxpayer, these rates are definitely more beneficial. If you're looking at taking money out of your company, you just need to be aware that there is going to be dividend tax to pay. And tax on those dividends, if you're a basic rate taxpayer, is at the 8.75% rate. If you're a higher rate taxpayer, it's at 33.75%. So it does go up quite noticeably if you are a basic rate taxpayer. But the question I would ask you is, do you need that money out? Is it you want it out and you need it? Or is it that actually you don't need the money and it could sit in the company until you do actively need that money? Which therefore means you're not going to be paying any tax on it personally until you actually need to take it. And at that point, you just need to acknowledge, I'm gonna have to pay tax, but you're choosing when to pay that tax, which is one of the great benefits of having it in a company that you can kind of manage those tax liabilities for you personally to hopefully minimize and manage when you want to be paying those taxes. Obviously, if you are drawing that money out, you will need to be doing a personal tax return as well as the company accounts and the company corporation tax return. 
I suppose that's one of those things to just be aware of, of the complications of the two. As an individual, it is slightly more straightforward. You just have to do a personal tax return each year, which is the tax year to the 5th of April each year and submit it by the 31st of January. Compared to a company where there is a little more, you have to have your own company bank account, you've got to have your own limited company, which is set up with a registered office, with directors, with shareholders. You've got to make sure your persons of significant control are up to date on company's house. And then you have to prepare company accounts each year, do a corporation tax return and your confirmation statement. The other thing to be aware of is if you are getting lending, any charges that you get with lenders will also be on company's house shown as charges against the company. So it does mean that there is a bit more disclosure, there's a bit more information that is out in the public sector. So it's just, again, something to be aware of as you are selecting which structure to choose, whether it be for tax reasons, whether it be because you don't want to share with the world, you want to do it in your own name, as it's a bit more private and people can't see what you're doing. In a company, people can see more what you are doing because there is information available on company's house for all to see. Now, depending on your income, this may be one of the key driving factors of whether you go down a company route or whether you go in your own name. And if you're doing it in joint names, obviously that income will be halved. So it will give you more scope to have things in your own name. I will say I see a lot of HMOs going into companies. That doesn't mean it's the right solution for you. But again, this is more, the income is slightly larger and it will take people into the high rates of tax, which they don't want to be going into. So what is the best structure for a HMO? Well, it will always depend on what is going to work for you. But some of the things you need to just consider are going to be things like what is the risk of doing it in your own name compared to a company? What are the tax implications? And that's tax implications for now on what tax you're going to be paying for income tax or corporation tax. But also do consider what are your future plans? Are you looking at selling it in the next five, 10 years and actually it may be worthwhile making use of your capital gains tax allowance if there's no negative impact from your income tax? And also that inheritance tax side of things. How is it fitting with your inheritance tax? As a HMO asset, they tend to be slightly more in value, but the value probably doesn't shift as often as it would on a buy to let where hopefully the equity and the value of the property may move more significantly over long periods of time. HMOs probably don't move as much over long periods of time, but the value of them is relatively large compared to what you would see in a normal buy to let. Hopefully that's given you a few thoughts on things you need to be considering and you can come to some sort of idea of where you think you want to be going with your structure for your next HMO project. But do reach out and speak to your accountant and speak to your finance brokers to make sure that you get the right support and right assistance to make the right decision for you on what to do with your next HMO project. Hopefully today you've discovered how you should be buying your HMOs that works for you. If you do have any questions, then please do leave a comment. Please like the video and do subscribe to the channel. And let's make tax less taxing. Let's tax.